Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us for Tuesday Talking Points today. My name is Carrie Simpson. I'm the CEO of Managed Sales Pros. And with me today is David Delaney of TenBound. And today, David and I are going to talk about effectively coaching sales development representatives for success. So a little bit of background on my relationship with David. David and I met four-ish years ago when he was building the SDR team at OpenDNS now Cisco Umbrella, and David has moved since into supporting enterprise and smaller businesses in building your sales development teams through TenBound. He is also the host of one of Silicon Valley's most popular podcasts called the Sales Development Podcast. If you're looking for a particularly good episode of the SDR podcast, you can find the one that I'm on. So David, thank you for joining us today. Absolutely, Thank Carrie. Thanks. Thank you for the introduction. Really looking forward to diving into this with your audience. Great. So I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping, first of all. On the right-hand side, you'll see a panel, and on that panel, there is an area where you can ask questions. I would ask you to hold your questions until the end of the webinar, and then I will read them to David, and he'll answer them one at a time. If you want to type in the questions as you think of them, Please go ahead and do that just with the understanding that I am going to read them at the end of the webinar. So without further ado, we're going to move into today's content. So take it away, David. Yeah, absolutely, Carrie. Thank you so much. Um, you know, I wanted to start in at a high level. I know some of the folks on the call have either thought about starting an SDR team or they've got an SDR team and they're just trying to figure out how to bring it to the next level. But just a kind of level set before we get into specifics around coaching and training, um, why, why are we doing sales development? Why has it become um, a real necessity for high growth, especially uh, SaaS companies, um, but you know, really high growth companies anywhere? What's the value of having a team like this? Um, sometimes that kind of gets lost in the mix. So I wanted to start there and just touch on a, a few high level uh, topics. One. Um, you know, sales development is, is really critical. Um, you need someone on the front lines every day out talking to prospects, talking to potential customers, getting a gauge for the marketplace. And um, as Carrie mentioned, um, Carrie goes into detail about how their team does this for clients that manage sales pros in um, even before, you know, launching a product, really getting on the phone and interacting with people to understand, you know, do we have um, you know, legs with this product, and is it enough to run with? You know, should we continue to to really focus on this, or should we start to th think of other opportunities? So, it's really critical to have someone on the front line having those conversations, and that's what a sales development team does. Um, the other, the other couple of points is it's it's incredibly time consuming. Um, you know, most people. Even if they do a inbound lead form or they're you know considering solving a, a problem, um, they're hard to get a hold of these days. Um, there's so many different channels. There's so much noise out there. Um, there's so many different people trying to uh, you know uh, uh, get a five minutes with uh, busy executives. That you know some studies have shown that you have to call and email and you know social touch people eight to ten times plus you know just to get on their radar screen and um, you know that that's very time consuming um, you also have to think about the data source and having good data to be able to contact people and going through records and making sure that they're updated and so you know that's that's a that's a whole um, you know, job that some you know can easily take up eight to ten hours a day, and um, you know, it, the the question that I have posed here is, if not the sales development team, then who else is going to do it? Um, you know, the your your uh, you know closing sales rep who has a quota to hit is going to be focused on uh, you know setting up quality appointments, but mainly making sure that deals close and that, that the customers have everything they need to move you know, through the pipeline to the closing stage. Um, you've got perhaps customer service people, but they're more interested in making sure that you keep your customer. Um, you have your busy executive team who you know, doesn't have time to 
do all the prospecting and the inbound you know lead qualification that's necessary so the real question is if not sales development who's going to do it and you know finally if I haven't sold you on on the value um, you know the the pipeline that we're building on the sales development side you know it, it, assuming that we're tweaking the process and, and um, creating high quality pipeline eventually becomes your sales pipeline and and you're closing um, you know revenue uh, so you know it's a totally necessary to continue to keep building that, keep focusing on that um, top of the funnel pipeline so that you have enough uh, in there at a you know 4x, 3x, 4x pipeline so that you know that you're going to be able to hit your revenue goals. So if uh, hopefully that sells you on the value of a sales development team and um, we're all on the same page there. So David, just taking a quick scan through the people that are attending today, I recognize a lot of the company names and the names of the people that are registered just looking on the side panel. Most of the companies that are uh, sitting on the webinar today, and I assume the ones that are going to be watching the webinar in perpetuity, uh, are organizations who are usually or at least currently around the $1 million mark trying to make the jump to the $2 million and then to the $5 million mark. And sales development is probably a relatively new term for them. So for you and I with backgrounds in software as a service, you say SDR and everyone in the industry knows what you mean. Here we're talking about people who are doing outbound sales prospecting. And they're either following up on leads that have come to your website through your marketing initiatives or like outbound completely cold sales outreach. So most of the companies on the webinar today or watching the webinar are likely either just engaging their first SDR or a telemarketer or a prospector or whatever you want to call them, or they've uh, tried and failed a couple of times. So when you, like I just, moving forward through the webinar, can you focus on service-oriented smaller business and how they can achieve the same sort of stratospheric success that software as a service companies implement? There isn't a lot of a difference. But I feel like if we keep saying software or software as a service, then people think like, oh, this isn't for me. This won't work for my small business. It will work for your small business. You can apply the exact same principles that enormously successful, scalable software companies are using working with people like David to create those programs. Yeah, Carrie, really good point. Um, I was having a conversation uh, just yesterday with a, or a few days ago with a gentleman from LinkedIn and you know, huge company with, you know, multiples, thousands of employees, but a lot of the terminology and, um, you know, focus that they had was super relevant to my own company, which just has a handful of employees. So it, it, um, it goes from, you know, one company that's just starting to expand and, and wants to grow up to companies with thousands of employees. So really good point. And it's actually a good segue because if, if we kind of move into uh, now that we've defined, you know, sales development as the folks on your team or potentially on your team who are really focused on the outbound prospecting, outbound cold calling to new business, and then also following up on anything inbound that might come in as a result of your marketing efforts, um, what, you know, what can it do for you? So we talked about market research, understanding what's resonating, what messages are resonating, who are we talking to, who is following up, um, you know, who is actually interested and, and are there some, is there some market intelligence there that we can use to better target our marketing as we move forward or better target our, our, our products. So a great deal of market research. Your database, how does your database look? Um, you know, is anyone actively making sure that there's good contacts in there? Um, your email list is, is fresh and accurate. Um, do you have all the notes uh, for your interactions with prospects um, logged in the database? Do you have a database? <laughs> you know, these kind of things. Uh, the SDR and the, sal the sales development team can really focus on to make sure that you're maximizing your, your, um, your time and, and productivity and using a, a marketing and prospecting database. Obviously, setting up meetings, again, eight to ten touches sometimes to get a hold of people on, on the new business side. Uh, you need someone really focused on getting those meetings set up for you so that 
um, you know, you can focus on other parts of your business and, and growing other parts, developing new products. Um, you've got to have someone following up on all the leads and making sure that you're putting them through enough touches. And finally, um, one, one thing to think of sort of longer term is, you know, if you, um, the, the sales development role is sometimes a, a starter role or an, um, a new hire role for gra new graduates and people with less experience that could potentially grow with your company to become sales reps, marketers, customer service support, and things like that. So, so as a talent pipeline, sales development can be great because then you don't have to spend all your time, you know, recruiting uh, for other positions. You have a good talent bench right there uh, working for you already. So a few things that it can do for you there. Um, you know, I always start with when you're thinking about starting a sales development team or how to improve is uh, you, you, you want to really focus on what kind of person would be successful for the role. Um, and so you know like further down that the training and the coaching that you do um, will not just be a waste of time. So if you, if you start with the right person and you, you, know, you're, um, you have a, a solid training and coaching program in mind, you're gonna be way better, better off than just trying to stick somebody in the seat and say, hey, it's just cold calling, you know, it's just prospecting, I'll just find whoever is available and stick them in the seat. And so a few points there, um, I would definitely start with what is your ideal candidate profile for this role? And are you more interested in the straight up hunter who's gonna be calling tons of people every day, having tons of conversations, gathering a lot of market research, and um, you know just really getting your name out there? Or do you need someone that's a little bit more customer service oriented, uh, say you've got a database of inbound leads and you just got to make sure that you're you know moving them through the process in a regular manner so that you're feeling great about um, you know getting a good ROI from your marketing pr programs um, that's going to be a different type of person that you're looking for in a different different role so I would just sit down and say okay what what do we need from our prospecting team and and what do we think what is our hypothesis about what an ideal person would be start with that jot it down get it down um, and then use it to build a job description or use it to build a um, a referral program on the next point the best candidates as you probably are aware they come from referrals they, they're somebody worked with them. Um, they used to be um, on their team at a different company. Um, they know them from, you know, a sports club or something like that. They just know, know them. And you could consider saying, hey, if you refer someone in that ends up doing a great job um, and they last for 90 to 120 um, days, we'll, we'll pay you, um, you know, a, some, a few bucks. Um, I always think, you know, that's a great way to get some great candidates. Um, you've heard the, the expression, you know, I take your time, you know, put your ideal candidate profile down, um, wait for those referrals, hire slow, and make sure that the process is thorough. Um, you know, even though it, it, it can be a junior level position at some companies, take your time, make sure that they talk to other people at the company, put them through a, a, a candidate process, because um, again, having a superstar in this role will make it grow, make it successful. If you rush this process, um, it, it can just be a huge time waster and money waster for you. So, um, and then, you know, if, you, if, it, if it works out, it's not a good fit, you realize that there, it's, it's not working and you have a set process, um, you know, move on fast in a humane way and let, let that person go to a different position. Being a sales development professional is not for everyone, for sure. Um, it, it, it's, it's a specialized role, and uh, you, you don't want to drag out that process for longer than you have to. So this is just some basic things. La last quick point is, you know, always be, um, you know, spending a little bit of time on LinkedIn, looking, looking for potential candidates that fit your ideal candidate profile, talking to people in the community, asking around if they know of anybody, uh, because again, it, you know, one great sales development rep can can make a huge impact on your business if you do this part right. 
So now you've you know you've spent some time. You haven't rushed into this. You got your process down. You've got a great person on the team. It's really important to sit down and go. Okay, at least for the first two weeks, um, I'm going to spend time with this person to make sure that they understand the buyer that we're going after. Uh, they understand the the territory that we're going to have to uh, be calling upon. They understand how the lead process works at your company have a basic onboarding plan at least for the first two weeks uh, when you get them in because um, there's nothing worse than coming in and you know it, we've all been there you, you're sitting at your desk um, you, you don't know your password you don't know your login um, nothing's organized and uh, you don't have a lot of experience potentially as a, as a new new person in the corporate world and you're just kind of trying to figure things out um, I mean just to have uh, this organized for you and, and uh, you know, some, for lack of a better expression, hand-holding in the first couple weeks, it just sets the tone for the rest of the uh, experience that the person has and, and can really lay a groundwork for success for them. So I would definitely, you know, sit down and, and um, as you develop some resources, you can put together your sales development playbook, which just has all the scripts and the email templates in one place how to handle some common objections, um, some basic information about your product. Uh, doesn't have to be, you know, some, you know, thing that is 100 pages long. I mean, it's just enough information so that, that you have something to sit down with them every day for the first couple weeks and go through and make sure that they understand a basic overview of what you're trying to do. And you can start to practice some of the call scripts and you can start to practice some of the um, talk tracks and the usual objections that you get from people when you start cold calling. So um, I would mark it out on your calendar, have it there, put, put in the time, um, because once once you kind of plant that seed, then the, you know as long as you have you know a really good person in the role, um, or if you're doing this for you know three or four people at the same time, once you have that seed planted, they're going to figure out how to make it grow and and uh, be successful from there. So the I would argue you need to yeah. add one more step in there, and that's how are they going to move the data through their um, through their chosen CRM or PSA, right? So everybody's going to you're not going to just hand them an Excel spreadsheet and say, okay, make your phone calls, right? There should be a process in place, not just to teach them how to do their job, but you should have prepared, planned, and set up the processes that they'll need within the CRM that you've chosen for your business. Uh, David, I'm sure you've seen countless times what happens when you bring someone in and expect that they're just going to understand how to use a database properly. So it's great yeah. if they can make fantastic phone calls, but if they're not recording that information properly, you're never going to find it again. Yeah, it's a really good point, Carrie. And, you know, one of the, one of the things you know, the real value of having that sales development team is that um, holding holding the team responsible for writing in the notes after every call, every interaction, you know, get it into your database, whether it's Salesforce or whatever, you know, you use to track these things. Um, so that if, if they set up a meeting for the business owner or for the account executive, that there's some notes in there and they understand what has happened before the meeting. It's huge. Um, and, you know, th that's something that you can put in. If you set up your basic sales development playbook, you can put in a few pages with just screenshots. Okay, so, you know, here you just talk to someone. Go to this screen in your database, put in this information, you know, add their phone number if it's not correct and update it and then press save. That's all it has to be. So. Yeah, I think there's a lot of opportunity there for you to make it as dummy proof as possible. Not saying that people aren't, like, common sense isn't always common, and if you want something done a certain way, you have to train to it. So don't expect that someone's going to sit down just because they used ConnectWise at the last company they were with, or Salesforce at the last company they were with, and totally understand what you want them to do with Salesforce. Yeah, exactly. It's it's uh, It takes, you know, time and energy to make sure that they're at least, at, like I said, two couple hours for the first two weeks and then they'll be off to the races. They'll be able to figure it out, but just make sure that they understand how to put that information in and the data is clean because it's 
it's it's huge and um and then you know it, it's setting up training as a regular cadence putting it in your calendar and making sure that you stick to it um i know that this looks daunting you're already too busy for um what you have got on your plate right now but it really if it's if it's on the calendar and it pops up and and you can do it regularly it makes a huge difference um whether it's a sales development rep who's this is their first job in the corporate world or they've been in the corporate world for 20 years um they they need um they need attention and they need you to be involved in what they're doing and you can gain great information from them about the market research and what's going on with the process and you can also uh, you know help them to get better at the job so that you, they can set up more meetings and build your pipeline so it's it's definitely worth putting in the time and what I would recommend is every day uh, when you come in if you're if you're located in the same office or even if it's a quick phone call just do like a five to ten minute morning stand up uh, a quick check in to see what they're working on and what their goals are for the day and if they have any issues that you need to work out this can be huge because um, just you know just like uh, we all need help in staying on track with exercise or eating right or you know all those things that we should be doing um, to have someone you know holding you accountable and, and doing it every day um, you can't just kind of sleepwalk through the day because you know that someone's going to be asked you about this so um, this is something that I do at every company that I work with it's it's hugely important and I definitely recommend making it part of your case it's just a quick five ten minute check-in um, to, to get everybody on the same page and then with the individuals a weekly one-on-one -on -one. again this is you sitting down one-to-one -one, um, 15 minutes to have them go through where they are to their goal for the week or for the month or to the quarter, however you have it set up, um, what they're doing, you know, specifically to make that goal and what issues they might be having. And really, and not to put more work on your plate, have them run the meeting. You know, after the first couple weeks where you show them how a one-on-one -on -one works and what they should bring to the meeting, have them run the meeting. And, it, you know, that way it, it takes the burden off your plate and they can come in prepared every time. You know, if they're not coming in prepared, if, if they're not giving you what you need and they're not, um, you know, on track with what they're doing, then that's another conversation. Um, that's something that you should record and understand and really figure out, you know, is this a, do I have an A player on my hands? Is this somebody who's going above and beyond or are they just kind of sleepwalking through the day? So the, we, the weekly one-on-ones can help you to determine that and help the, help the team to, to get better. And then a couple other things I would say, you know, at least once a week, if you have a team, um, you know, get everybody together for going through how you're doing as a team um, from a metrics perspective. And then one quick, you know, set up training. Um, and a, a quick, you know, training example could be, a vol you know, a, um, a, a negative situation that happened on the phone um, or you know something that went wrong uh, during the week and you unpack it uh, with the group and get feedback on what other people would recommend doing and then put up some positive you know um, recommendations that people can take you know two or three things that they can take back and use if they jump if they get into that negative situation so that's just one you know quick on the fly thing that you can do but it's just setting it up weekly so that you have these set trainings and people really feel like, you know, they're getting some regular training from you in a either, uh, you know, a one-to-one -one or a group setting. Um, and then, you know, this is kind of taking it to the next level, but a lot of companies that I work with or that I talk to, they sometimes have an ad hoc training where they just find like a, a Carrie Simpson who's an expert in cold calling or they find someone you know, who's an expert in time management or something like that, and they just have them come in and, and, and talk for an hour about their specialty and do a Q&A um, just on an ad hoc basis to give them, you know, some more training and something that's not necessarily related to um, sales development. Could also be product information. If you're, you have a new program coming out or a new service or a new product, um, have one of the product people come in and talk about it. 
Great. So that's training. And then I'll just go into some quick um, points on coaching, um, how coaching, you know, a little bit different. The training is much more, it's a setup thing. It's on your calendar. It happens, you know, regularly. Um, there, there could be a template that you have for running those training programs like I was describing. Um, but then what is coaching and what, what have I seen? And, and Carrie and I talked about a bit about this um, has been super helpful for um, sales development reps to improve, to um, refocus, and to uh, get you more meetings and more pipeline. Um, I would say that the number one best way to really understand how someone's doing is actually just listen to the calls. And um, there's a few different ways that you can do this. You can do a phone splitter. Um, that's a little bit time consuming because you're waiting. There's some vendors out there that now can help you to record the calls and then narrow it down. Or, you know, just uh, grab your laptop and sit next to them. You're only going to hear one side of the conversation. But just listen to what they're saying. Um, are they using the scripts that you went over um, in the training? Are they using the feedback uh, that you've been giving them? Um, are they coachable in that way? Um, or are they going down, you know, the same rabbit hole every time on every call, making the same mistake again and, and not really trying to improve uh, from it, it'll tell you a lot. And it's the best way, you know, uh, to really understand kind of what's going on there on the floor. And then you can kind of take notes and use that either during your one-on-one -on -one, um, when you're talking with them um, with some, some things that they could potentially try or even bring it to the training session to say, hey, you know, we've been getting the same reaction from our, our, you know, initial talk track. Let's, uh, let's unpack this. Let's talk about ways that we can get around this or sound better or open the conversation better because we keep hearing the same thing. And the other, the other way, I know it's not going to be popular. No one's going to want to do it. I, I understand that. I know that it's hard. This is why we we hire sales development people so that they can make the calls and they can <laughs> follow up on the leads. But I would really encourage you, if you really want to understand how effective the process is and, and how effective your playbook is and the scripts and your email templates and all this stuff, jump on the phone. Um, just you know, put it in your calendar for an hour a week and follow the exact process that you have in place for your sales development reps. Um, <laughs> this is an eye opener um, to say the least. Huge. Yeah, I'm still doing this every week, David. I'm still on the phone every week, and I had to do a little bit of a project this week because somebody called in sick, and we just were we were short hours, and I got on the phone, and like three hours into it, I was like, okay, we need to change this, we need to change this, we need to change this. this there needs to be a shortcut here. This should be a one click, not three clicks. This is redundant. So even you know those of us who are doing it all day, every day, there's still an opportunity to learn and change and grow. And if you're a small business looking at hiring their first SDR and you've never made a cold call, you need to start there. You need to understand what you're bringing people into your company to do. You need to understand the process, the objections, the things that are going to happen on those calls. If you don't already know that, you know, make a hundred calls, you'll find out real quick. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and I learned this from Carrie and Trish Bertuzzi and Matt Admonton. I mean, some of the top minds in the sales development field, they, they all say the same thing. Uh, you, you, can, you can talk all day about, about the process and the scripts and the, 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 all this stuff and, and what specifically that you want to coach people on, but there's, there, you can learn more in five minutes of making calls than you know, theorizing on it all day. So I would definitely recommend doing that. Um, hopefully we've sold you on that. Uh, and uh, give it a try and see how it goes. You'll learn a ton, so. Yeah. And uh, these are a few, I, I don't have any skin in the game on any of these, but um, there, th there are a few um, vendors out there that plug into your phone or your computer and they, they can, you know, save a lot of time in recording the calls that are being made and then narrowing it down and transcribing it um, would definitely, uh, if that's something that you can afford, they're not cheap, but uh, they're super useful because 
you can also do the the old school you know phone splitter to um, understand what's going on on the calls but we go back to the sales development is very time consuming you're going through a lot of phone trees you're going through a lot of voicemails you're talking to a lot of you know people that are irrelevant and so it it's um it's more time consuming to do the splitter but even if if you listen and they get a hold of of you know two or three people in an hour and they have a conversation you've you've got some information there that you can look at as far as what they need coaching on and what they need help with with regards to the process um, and then finally the absolute cheapest method is you grab your laptop and your peanut butter sandwich and you just go sit down next to them and listen to them make calls and you're only going to hear one side of it but at least you can identify some patterns and you know talk about what you've been hearing on the on those calls so um other, just a couple of yeah words. sure Different. yeah exactly a couple of words an inflection the tone of voice uh, the confidence uh, the all these very subtle things that go beyond uh, you know just reading a script because you're talking to people on the other end of the line and you really only have you know five yeah. to ten seconds to make a, a good impression and and open up the conversation and so um, the coaching really, really helps, and I would definitely recommend um, starting with the calls. Um, other quick thing is, you know, they're sending out a lot of emails. Um, email is still a popular way to communicate. People live in their inbox. Your sales development rep will be sending out emails, um, even in some cases multiple emails, you know, at the same time in a template form. Um, so you really want to stay on top of that. You, you don't want to, um, if, if you own the company or, you know, your, um, the, your, your brand reputation is at stake if they're sending out bad emails and you don't want to become known as a spammer, for example. So you got to stay on top of the emails. And from a coachability perspective, um, I, I would start by writing the templates you know, yourself based on what you think will resonate with your buyers, writing the templates and then giving it to the sales development rep um, to send out and customize and, you know, put it on your calendar, you know, every week or every two weeks, go in, look at the templates, make sure that they're the type of emails that you want sent out. Because all of a sudden, you know, if you don't do this, a month will go by and um, you haven't looked at the templates lately, you don't know what they're sending out. Um, the, the response rates might not be very good, and all of a sudden you you read them and you go, oh my god, you know, I, I we've been, this is what we've been sending out. This is not not representing our company well. Um, you don't want to get caught like that. Um, so I would again on the calendar check the templates, make sure that they're good, and then every once in a while, you know, in, inspect um, <laughs> randomly. Um, hey, what what have you guys been sending out, or what have you been sending out? Um, let's take a look. Um, we're not trying to micromanage, but I just want to make sure that it, it's aligned, and we're going to be able to get our best, um, you know, brand uh, reputation out there and um, the best response rate that we can. And it's very eye opening, um, and, and and so you know, it, it'll it'll give you some uh, direction on your coaching. You know, so this person needs help you know, making their point faster or, you know, uh, their emails are too long or their 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 grammar is not good and things like that. Um, that'll give you some direction on how to coach them. So, um, you know, the last quick thing is the talent pipeline uh, for for uh, the sales development reps. If 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 you if you just want meetings, if, if you just want pipeline, that's absolutely fine. It, it can be a specialized role and I know people who have been SDR uh, sales development reps for you know 10 20 years they just love the job and they want to do it and that's all that they want to do and that's fine um, and there's nothing wrong with that if they're consistent and they're delivering um, we love them we love them because they keep the pipeline full and they're doing all the stuff that um, we don't have time to do but if they come to you as part of the one-on-one -on -one for example and they say hey I want to become a sales rep someday. I want to get into marketing. I want to. I want your job. Um, I want to own the company. I mean, whatever. Sky's the limit. Um, let's let's get it set up. And again, put it back on to the the sales development rep to answer some of these questions. Um, you know, what do they want to do? What's the game plan? 
what do they need to do and what can I do to help? And, um, you know, are they ready for maybe more responsibilities at the company? Um, are they blowing out their number and they're doing a great job and they're coachable and they're, you know, all, checking all the boxes on the performance side? You know, is it time to start, you know, giving them some more responsibilities that they could put on their resume and that can help you out so that I, that I can free you up to do other things that are uh, higher leverage for you? That's great. Um, and you know it's on them uh, to run their career. You you can't uh, do much more than offer the framework for them to be able to be successful and give them the resources that they need to be successful. But this isn't something that you have to you know hold their hand and make sure that they're doing it. It's totally on them. Some people will take this and absolutely blow your mind with all the thought and research and stuff that they put into it. Some people will take this and. You'll never hear about it again. It's, it's up to them. So I think as a good employer, um, if you're making this type of career path available to them, you're head and shoulders above most employers that are out there. So just making these questions part of the one-on-one -on -one and see what they do with it. And then the, the final quick thing that I want to mention as far as coaching it for the sales development reps and getting them really um, focused is putting together a certification program and this might be you know v2 of your of your sales development program once you get everything else um, in line but what's cool about a certification program is I don't know about you but uh, I like you know getting a certificate or getting a getting a blue ribbon or getting a medal and and you know knowing that I'm making measurable progress um, toward my goal and um, you know it's it's um, it seems kind of hokey, but it, it, it by ha setting up a certification program, you can say, "Hey, look, here's here's what you need to do specifically in order to move up in in my company, um, or here's what you need to do if you want to go to that next step and become a sales rep. You need to um, become, you know, certified as a senior sales development representative." We'll give you the certification. We'll give you the blue ribbon, and then you're you're eligible to move up in in the company. And and what it does is, you know, it, it says um, you have to make your quota for you know two to three quarters in a row. Um, you have to uh, receive a positive uh, performance review for two to three quarters in a row. Um, you have to take these training classes, for example, or s show some kind of initiative outside and, and things like that. You set it up and then you have everything organized and you know for sure that you're going to get the performance that you need from the sales development rep by having this certification and then they're going to get what they need in, in the recognition that they've done these things and they're a valuable contributor and they're ready to move up um, as opposed to hey you know, I've been here for two years and you've never given me a raise and I don't I've never had any promotion like well I, I you know th that conversation is, is tough when there's nothing to kind of pin it to and an easy response would be well are you certified as a senior sales development rep well no because I didn't do this this not okay see you later go back <laughs> you know go do those things get certified and then we'll talk so just another another thing to to think about um, as you develop out the coaching for the these reps some further reading so David, uh, that, yeah go ahead right. yeah is that something that you can help people with like I feel like developing a certification course might be a little daunting to a lot of people is there other services available is that something that you would offer like where would you if you wanted to build something like that where would you start yeah, definitely. That's something that Tenbound does um, for our clients, and we we offer a diagnostic where we look at their sales development program. We look for any gaps, and we usually pick out you know three things that people can start to work on immediately. And one of them could be the certification if they don't have any real focus on their training and coaching and career path for the sales development reps. We'll help them to put that certification together. Um, and in the meantime, you know, I, I, there's some great um, resources out there on, that go into certification. Um, I mentioned Trish Bertuzzi has a wonderful book out called The Sales Development Playbook. I don't ha actually have it posted here. I should, but um, it, it goes into um, 
some ways to specifically build out the certification that will help to motivate the sales development reps. So I would definitely recommend that. Maybe we can put up a link or something like that after the webinar. Okay. Yep. Great. Good. And and it, since we're talking about reading, these are some these are some key, um, you know. Uh, books that I would take time, if you haven't read these yet, read these first as you're thinking about putting together your sales development team or how you're going to put together um, the structure because they, they, you know, it's kind of the latest thinking on uh, with the challenger customer, for example, how many people are involved in deals and, and you know, how many people we actually have to talk to um, with sales acceleration. Um, you know, how, how many touches it takes to actually get in touch with, you know, some of these people since there's so much noise out there, they really break it down mathematically so you can know exactly, you know, how many people the sales development reps need to call every day, how many emails to send, all, that's, all that analysis is there. Um, revenue disruption is, is a great primer just on how people buy today and how we should be approaching them um, versus, you know, maybe 10 or 15 years ago. So th this is some great homework for you. And again, it's really easy to remember the sales development playbook is, is a, a great place to start as well. And um, that's about it. I don't know if any questions came in over the wire, Carrie, um, but uh, we have our both of our email addresses posted here. If any of this stuff, um, you know, seemed helpful or confusing or you want any more information, both of us are happy to help moving forward. So. Carrie, yeah, did we have great. any Thanks questions so come much. in? Yeah, sure. We have not received any questions yet, but we can give it another minute or so. And if people would like to ask any questions, they are welcome to type them in now or email them directly to David or I. I think you're off the hook, David. <laughs> well, great. We either confused them completely or we answered all their questions on how to coach and develop these teams. Um, again, um, definitely available for any information that you need and any further questions. Carrie, I really appreciate the opportunity and I hope that all your listeners got a lot of value out of it. Well, I know I certainly did. I've got a couple of questions for you offline afterwards. So thanks again for taking the time to be with us and for everybody who's uh, participating in the webinar today. I'll hope, I hope you will continue to join us on Tuesday afternoons at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for Tuesday Talking Points. Everybody have a great afternoon.